in the last video we were looking at at the symmetry under uh, time translation and we um, defined what is called Jacobi's integral okay which is also uh, known as energy function or or Hamiltonian okay so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that and we'll take two simple examples in in today's video for appreciating um, these quantities better and in the next one we'll talk about in the next video and or so we'll start talking about symmetries under uh, space translation okay so let's start by recollecting what we talked about last last time okay and we'll take two simple examples after that so um, as you may recall in the last video we saw that if you have a system that is described by a Lagrangian L Q Q dot T okay maybe I should remove this okay so right now I'm, I'm keeping the time dependence to be there so there may be an explicit time dependence then we saw that if I use equations of motion that, Euler, that is Euler Lagrange equations of motion then I can show that the total time derivative of the following quantity so d over dt q alpha dot del l over del q alpha dot minus l okay recall that there is a summation implied over alpha because of the Einstein summa summation convention and we showed that this total time derivative is del l over del t okay now if L is not a function, the Lagrangian is not a function of T explicitly, okay, if this is true, which just means that delta L over delta T is zero, then the first integral Okay, then the first integral of motion h q alpha dot del l over del q alpha dot minus l is a constant of motion because this guy is zero and the total time derivative of this is zero okay so and this is what is what i am writing as h is a constant of motion Okay, or, or it is conserved. Very good. And we also found that in general, okay, um, your in general um, H is T2 plus internal energy minus T0 and recall T2 is the term which is uh, quadratic in generalized velocities and T0 is the term which is uh, of or let's say independent of generalized velocities and same is U so U also does not depend on generalized velocities in this case so U and T0 are at the same footing here and that is what we found and note that T1 does not appear in this expression. Okay, let me write it down. Note that T1 does not appear here. Okay. And we also saw that if the transformation from the Cartesian coordinates to the generalized coordinates does not involve time explicitly okay meaning if uh, let me complete the sentence if if the 
transformation does not involve time explicitly in going from the Cartesian coordinates to the generalized coordinates, then we could uh, show that the H, the Jacobi's integral is same as the total energy of that system. Okay, that's what we saw. Let me write it down. So if your Ri, these are your Cartesian coordinates, and this is your transformation rule, which takes you from the Cartesian to the generalized coordinates. Let's say there are s degrees of freedom. Okay, and if this does not explicitly depend on time, so I'm removing t, then you know all the terms which are uh, linear or degree zero in generalized velocities they disappear. So, for example, t zero is zero, t one is also zero, and then your h is just t two plus u, but t two is the only term which appears in the kinetic uh, term, so which is same as t. Okay, and this is the total energy. That's what um, we talked about last time. And from here we want to uh, take it further. Or maybe let me leave it like this. Okay. Okay, uh, nevertheless, it's possible that you, um, your transformation from Cartesian coordinates here, okay, to the generalized coordinates involves time explicitly, okay, even then it is possible that the Lagrangian does not depend on time explicitly, okay, and uh, clearly in that situation your dh over dt this this quantity this will be zero because your lagrangian will not depend on time explicitly okay so h will be conserved but because we are saying that there is an explicit time dependence then your h will not be the total energy because then h will have the form t2 plus u minus t0 okay so uh, that's a remark which i wanted to make maybe i will write it down so that uh, we have it ne neatly written here. So let me write down remark. It may happen that even when okay, your transformation from the Cartesian to generalized coordinates is a function of time explicitly. Let me just write Q. Okay. That is del R i over del t is not equal to zero. That's the same thing. The Lagrangian does not depend explicitly on time. on time okay that's nice which means what if that happens i'll give you a later later an example of uh, this but let's say we um, believe that that can happen then in that situation in that situation let's go back what is true in that situation here, where is it? Here. See, this is H, this piece, and this is del L over del T. I am saying del L over del T is 0, so dH over dt will be 0. Okay. dH over dt equal to 0, meaning it is conserved. H is conserved. But your H would be T2 plus U minus T0, right? Because all these terms, I mean, not all these, but T0 appears because of the presence of time uh, in this um, transformation law. Let's see. 
I think we can see here. Yeah, here. You see, all these terms were generated because of explicit time dependence. This one here, this one here, and this was anyway the one only one which is independent of uh, time derivatives with respect. I mean, time derivatives of R. So you see, in that case, this is not equal to total energy. Okay. So which just means that your Jacobi's integral, whether it is um, your h is a conserved quantity or not, it's a different thing, a different question from uh, asking whether your um, Jacobi's integral is equal to the total energy. Okay, so these are two different questions, as you have uh, seen here just now. Okay, so let's take a simple example. I will take two simple, very simple examples to uh, underscore these points. So example number one, let me use some nice color if I can. Okay, let's see. It. No. I, okay, let's, anyway, this is some funny color, but I'll take it. Bead on Okay, bead on a uniformly rotating wire that is uh, lying in a horizontal plane, okay? Bead on a uniformly rotating horizontal Z O N T A L Z horizontal wire. Treating horizontal wire. Perfect. Okay. So uh, the situation is this. So let's say you have let's say this wire which goes to infinity and you have a bead here. Bead is um, like mala me moti. Okay. That's that's the thing. So it can slide up along along this wire so imagine a thin wire not, not this thick pen and this thing is moving about this fixed point uniformly okay by uniform means uh, the angular velocity is not changing with time that's what i mean so this is moving and if it, and there is a bead which will which can uh, slide across along the wire that can happen so what we are asking is what happens to that bead when this thing is moving uh, rotating uniformly Okay, and the plane is horizontal, so I'm not, not, not talking about such a rotation, I'm talking about a horizontal plane. So gravity has no role here. Okay, good, so what, what happens if this is the case? Okay, here. Okay. So here, let me draw the diagram. So that's your wire, which goes along this. I'm just feeling like putting more color today. Um, let's see if I can put, <laughs> no. Okay, let's see. So here is your bead. Okay, and this thing is moving with some angular velocity omega. That's your x-axis. That's your y-axis, perfect. And the distance from here to there, that is r, okay. Nice, looks good. So, um, well, clearly I can write down x equals r cos omega t and y is r sine omega t. Okay, so your uh, system is clearly one dimensional. There is only one, uh, so instead of using the two Cartesian coordinates x and y, I'm using the Cartesian, um, the polar coordinates r and theta, but theta is already determined by the wire itself, okay? 
So wire fixes what the theta would be for that particle. So there is only one coordinate left that is r. And you also notice that there is an explicit time dependence in the transformation from r to q where q is r. You see here there is a factor cos omega t. So time is explicitly here. Okay. And of course uh, there is an implicit time dependence here r of t. So we have an explicit time dependence. Uh, let me write here. So we have explicit time dependence in the transformation from R to Q's and then um, also as I said the angular position is completely determined by the wire. So the constraint that this wire is moving at angular velocity omega uh, that determines where um, the bead would be as far as the angle is concerned. The angular position determines the sorry the angular position is determined by the constraint. Okay, that's good. I believe we have already uh, done this example earlier. So you can do the following. So clearly the Lagrangian in this case is just the kinetic energy because there is no, no potential energy involved in this problem. So it's just the constraint. There, is, there are no other forces which are acting on, on the bead other than the force of constraint. So your kinetic energy is uh, all you have in the Lagrangian. So half m x dot square plus y dot square. And as I said, the potential energy is zero. So exercise number one, please do it. Show that your Lagrangian in the generalized coordinates, which is r now, is half m r dot square plus r square omega square. Okay, where omega is a constant. Okay, we said that the wire is moving uniformly, so omega is constant, does not depend on time. Now, when you show this, you realize that the Lagrangian does not depend on time explicitly. Okay, so clearly this L does not depend on time explicitly, which means the partial derivative of L with t is zero even though your, um, the transformation uh, from R to Q does involve time explicitly. Okay, so that's the example of such a case. Now, let me write down here. Okay, so here, what is T2? T2 is half M r dot square. What is t1? 0 because there is no term which is linear in generalized velocities. What is t0? That is half m r square omega square. Okay, very nice. Next exercise for you, find out the equation of motion for this system. Okay, so you please find it out and the equation of motion, use your LR Lagrange equation and get the following. Equation of motion should be R double dot minus M omega square R equals zero. Okay, um, now exercise number three, which is also simple, find out the Jacobi's integral. Okay, that is find out H. And you know the formula of H. So show that you get the following H equals half m r dot square minus half m r square omega square. Okay, that's your Jacobi's integral in this case. Is it equal to the total energy of the system? Okay, does it equal the total energy of the system? What do you think? 
and is h conserved so that's the two thing these are the two things now h is not the total energy of the system because your total energy was purely kinetic which was here right Th this is the total kinetic energy so you half m r dot square which is here but then you have a plus half m r square omega square and here you have minus half m r square omega square so clearly this is not the total energy so we see that h is not equal to total energy of the system okay not surprising because your uh, as we talked earlier uh, transformation laws do contain time explicitly and is h conserved yes h is conserved okay um that's our example number 1 and i hope you appreciate more um what whatever we talked about jacobi's integral uh, earlier now i'll take another example uh, a ma minor extension of this problem instead of taking the wire to be rotating uniformly in the plane i will take it to be um, i mean having an angular acceleration so let's say it has an angular acceleration of alpha so the rotation is not uniform with time okay and we'll ask the um, same questions as, bef as before and um, let's see okay let's do that color thing again So example two is bead on a horizontal wire that is rotating um, with angular acceleration. alpha okay so that's the thing we want to talk about now again as before your x is r cos theta your y is r sin theta you can find out theta given your initial uh, condition and uh, your alpha okay so first you show what the kinetic energy is and your t will be again the same thing as before so half m r dot square plus r square omega square but note now omega does depend on time okay so you have a time dependence which is explicit because this omega is explicitly depending on time see the r's have time dependence but omega is not a generalized coordinate it's not some theta or something okay it's anyway one dimensional system so this function because of this function your t has an explicit time dependence okay which means your lagrangian which is same as t because again the, there is no potential energy okay which means that del l over del t is not equal to zero this time last time it was okay now is h conserved no why because del l over del t is not zero so your dh over dt is not equal to zero so your h is uh, not conserved and um, anyway there is no chance of h being the total energy of the system okay because there is an explicit time uh, involved in in the transformation from r to q which is good so um, that's another simple example i'll give you some exercise which you can do to you know ga get some practice with doing some minor algebra in this uh, which is involved in this so what you do is calculate the total derivative dh over dt explicitly so meaning you construct the h 
by the relation q dot del l over del q dot minus l you take that one then you to, uh, take a total derivative of it okay so you have to use chain rule do that get whatever answer you get then you calculate del l over del t so take the lagrangian take the partial derivative and show that dh over dt and del over del t del l over del t they are same okay so these two should give you the same answer okay so please do these two two three simple exercises that i have given and in the next video what we'll do is um, we'll start talking about symmetry due to space translation okay so here we were looking at uh, the symmetry of time translation and we saw certain things are conserved and we want to see the equivalent things when there is um, symmetry under translation in space that will be goal for our next next video see you then